Okay, this experiment is based on Dr. Stifler's SEC Exciter, and so what I've tried to do is maximise the RF output so I can light fluorescent tubes wirelessly, and this circuit seems to work, and I'll just run through it with you. Uh, this is the L3 output coil, it's 620 turns of 26 SWG Magwire, so that's a very large output coil for an SEC Exciter. The L1 coil is not that critical, I can use various inductors there, and I'll show you that later in the video. This is an MPSA06 transistor. I found this part of the circuit critical. This is a 0.82 nanofarad capacitor. This is a 22 microhenry uh, actual inductor, and these are just two red LEDs. This is a one meg resistor and the power supply. So, uh, this part of the circuit here, it's an add-on. Basically, that's an aluminium tray, and when it's in close proximity to the L3 coil, and it's connected either to the negative or to the positive rail, I found the output increased. So you can add this part on, but it's not critical. So that's the circuit diagram. I'll just show you it running now. Okay, this is the uh, large L3 coil, and it's a lot larger than the normal L3s used in the SEC Exciter circuit. And uh, that's the very first Slayer coil I use, so it's going to be quite interesting to see a comparison between the two. Now the circuit's running away here, you can see the two LED indicators lit and the first L1 coil I'm going to show you is this one here, it's from a TV set, it's some kind of inductor and uh, this is not the critical part of the circuit, I'd say the critical part was like I said before was the uh, timing capacitor, the 0.82 nanofarad and the 22 actual uh, inductor, 22 microhenry. So I'll just show you the, uh, the field on this, this is a, a neon and if I run it the full length of the field the neon is lit the full length of the tube, which is interesting, because on the Slayer Exciter, it's uh, predominantly more towards the top of the uh, of the coil, but this uh, runs the full length. So that's the first interesting thing. I'll just show you lighting the fluorescent tube, and it does all that wireless business, and that's nice and bright, and you can move it a fair way away. That's the uh, tray which I mentioned in the uh, circuit diagram. Now I've got that quite a far, quite far away from the coil now, so it's not having much of an effect. But when it's uh, running on very low voltage, say three volts or four volts, if you bring it closer, it brightens everything up. But uh, that's really bright. That uh, that uh, fluorescent. So that's the first inductor. I'll just swap it over to another one. Okay, I swapped the inductor now for an electric motor as the L1 coil, and uh, it's not spinning, no such luck there. I was kind of hoping it would, but it won't. But uh, you can see the LED indicators are lit, so the L1 coil is not that critical what you use, really. Uh, it's quite forgiving. And I'll just show you the uh, field again. This is the uh, flicker flame bulb. So that lights up nice. Fluorescent. And the uh, neon. Same thing again, field all the way down. So uh, that's using the electric motor as the L1. Okay, this is the third L1 coil I'm going to show you. This is steel garden wire, and it's the same stuff the motor uses for the penny oscillator, and it's uh, air core. So we've got the LED indicators on, and I'll show you the fluorescent tube lighting. So that's nice and bright again. So I was just pleased to find uh, that I could get the uh, SEC Exciter to work like a Slayer Exciter with the large RF field. So I hope you find this interesting. Thanks for watching. Uh, one last thing, uh, the circuit's drawing 47 milliamps at 16 volts there. Thanks for watching.